All right, y'all. Let's talk about mistakes homeschoolers make. Hi, I am Rachel from Seven and All. I am a second generation homeschooler. Homeschool has been part of my life for more than 25 years now. Um, and I am early on in the stages of raising the second generation of homeschooled kids. And I thought today would be a good day to talk about mistakes that homeschoolers make. And I am doing this in collaboration with my good friend Leilani from Living with Eve. I approached her to collaborate on this with me because I know it's a bit of a edgy topic, you know, no one wants to hear that they're making a mistake, but um, I know she's always up for an edgy topic, <laughs> um, and so am I. Uh, I think it's good for us to talk about and reflect on and discuss what kind of mistakes we can make so that we can all learn from each other. So if you are making one of these mistakes, I encourage you, don't be offended that I'm calling this a mistake. Instead, consider. Might you do something a little bit differently in your homeschool? Is there something different you could do that would help to make your homeschool a more joyful and effective experience for all? All right, let's get started. The number one mistake that I'm gonna talk about today is that homeschool parents assume that their kids know something simply because they have taught that thing to their child. The uh, homeschool parent in planning out the next year's homeschool or in choosing books to read, they think, oh, I don't need to teach this. I don't need to um, plan on this read aloud because I have already taught this subject to my child. So I assume that they know it. Guys, that's not really how a lot of kids' brains work. We really can't assume that just because we have taught a skill, we've taught a math concept, we've taught a science concept, we taught about a history event to our children that they know it, that they understand it, and that they can apply it. This is important. And I am preaching to the choir here because this is actually a really hard thing for me to remember because for me personally, that is how my brain works. Generally speaking, if you taught me something or if I read something, I know it and I know it for the rest of my life. So, as a homeschool parent, as a teacher, it, it can be flabbergasting at first when you, you know that you taught your kids a concept and you taught it really well and you brought out the hands-on manipulatives and you sang a song and you even watched a video and then three weeks later, they have to do a problem that includes that topic or they need to write a sentence and use those same skills and they don't do it. And you're like, what? <laughs> How does this happen? Guys, it doesn't mean you're failing as a teacher. It doesn't mean your kids are failing as a student, typically. It's just the fact that kids, oftentimes, normal kids, <laughs> they just need to learn something again. And then after a while, they need to learn it again. And they need to learn it again <laughs> to really internalize a certain concept. So don't be afraid to repeat. Things. Don't be afraid to repeat certain concepts over the years. Don't be afraid to go back over the same topics. And don't even be afraid to repeat the same read aloud. If you read a book four or five years ago and you're like, that was a really good book, but maybe my kids were a little bit too young to fully appreciate it, read it again. Because <laughs> if it's a good book, it's worth reading again after a few years. So your kids can understand it at a deeper and better level. I actually love literature-based learning. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know I love literature-based learning. But this can be one of the kind of downfalls of literature-based learning that if, when you are just reading books to your children and expecting them to learn, sometimes there's not enough practice and application and review and you don't realize that your children don't know something that you've taught them. So. If you are a literature-based homeschooler, just think about ways to implement practice and review through narration and through projects that come back in, through reading books that are on the same topic from year after year. Just, you know, at some point your children do master these skills, whatever skill you're working on. It's not that they'll keep forgetting things forever. It's just that they need a certain amount of repetition. So that's, that's that one mistake assuming your kids know something just because you taught it to them. The second mistake I want to talk about today 
Many homeschool parents make the mistake of simply being too nice to their kids. And this comes from so many stories and so many basically heartbreaking testimonies I have heard of moms who are struggling with homeschool or families who have had to walk away from homeschooling simply because the children would not respect mom as their teacher and would consistently and repeatedly turn in shoddy work to mom while when they had a teacher teaching them they would be motivated to do their best and they would challenge themselves and uh, moms would become very frustrated and feel rightly speaking that their children weren't making any progress because they weren't treating their mom the, with the same respect that they would a teacher and this is a serious problem that should not be taken lightly this is because when kids do not respect their mom as a teacher this will steal the joy and it will steal the success of your homeschool i do not at all fault parents and families from walking away from homeschool and choosing other educational methods after battling with this problem but there is something that we can all learn from the experiences of these families as homeschool parents we need to build a family culture where our children respect us as their teachers as well as their parents yes we are their moms we are the ones who love them more than more than they will ever know the ones who would sacrifice and do practically anything for our babies but we are also the ones with the authority in their lives as their teachers to say i'm not satisfied with this work i'm not satisfied let's start over and try again when your child turns in something that's unacceptable all moms are tough but I do think you kind of need a little bit of extra iron in your soul to be a teacher, to love your child so much, but to also be willing to stand firm and not accept less than what you know that they can do. Uh, my mom was actually very excellent at us and most of the kids in my family learned very, very quickly that they would, they would have rather turned in lackluster work to a teacher than to our mom because if you turn in homework that's not very good to a teacher what's going to happen you get a bad grade what's going to happen if you turn in <laughs> poorly done work to my mom well for one thing you're going to have to do it again until it reaches a satisfactory level and for another thing you'll probably get about an extra five pages worth of assignments to do to offer you the opportunity to reflect on the value of doing your work well the first time. It usually took no more than a couple of experiences with this approach um, for my siblings to learn that it was simply easier to do their work well the first time and not to mess with mom. The third mistake I want to talk about today is spending too little money on your homeschool. And guys, I am saying this from a point of love. I don't know if any of you guys remember, but there was a whole Reels trend on Instagram this past year, which was like this. My husband wants to talk about how much I spent on homeschool curriculum when I'm finished sweeping the floor. Well, in my case, the reality would look a lot more like this. Wow, Rachel. Did you spend money on a new laminator for homeschooling? That's awesome. Good job. Um, no, no, no. This is just mom's and I'm borrowing it. Um, we really don't need a laminator because she already has one. You can drop it off at her place tomorrow. So I am a natural cheapskate at heart. I get where you're coming from with not wanting to spend too much money on your homeschool. But when we go too far to the cheapskate side, we can add a lot of work and a lot of stress for ourselves that can steal some of our joy in homeschooling and at times we can also limit our homeschools and our kids from being what they could be if we would simply invest the money in these valuable resources. I know it's become a point of even pride and bragging within the homeschool community. I'm homeschooling five kids and I spent $35 on homeschool this year. Um, I have seen it. I have had these conversations. And I understand, you know, every family is working with their own budget. I encourage you that if homeschool is something you want to have be a part of your life, there are always ways to find a little bit to work, you know, 
get a job and make a little bit of money for some books to uh, you know to save some money on something else somewhere you know eat a little bit of extra just spaghetti <laughs> for a while whatever it is you know everyone has their priorities if homeschool is a priority for you I encourage you to find a way to devote the needed amount of resources to it because it's well known when we like it's a well-known factor typically spending money on something can make your life a little easier I'll use the example of doing the laundry Everyone knows it is easier to throw clothes in the dryer versus to hang them up to dry on a line. I can say this because I have been a devoted clothes drying on a line person for eight years now. I haven't had a dryer for a very long time. I'm okay with this. This is one of the ways that I'm okay with saving money, with being environmentally friendly. I know, it's, I, I just, maybe this is weird, but this is <laughs> something I do. But. I'm under no illusions that it makes my life easier or that it wouldn't take less time if I simply got a dryer. But in the same way with homeschool, yeah, you can homeschool for less money if you have the time to put into planning everything yourself and you know juggling a couple different library cards and getting interlibrary loan and borrowing resources from other people who have spent the money on those resources. There are a lot of things you can do to save money. but. The outside, you know, the flip side of that is that you're spending time and you got to think there are seasons when you have more time than money. That's great. There are other seasons when you have more money than time to spend. So you have to find the right balance for you of where is a wise place to spend my money where it's going to save me time and save me stress so that it can bring joy to my homeschool. The second part of this is that while quality resources are not the guarantee of homeschool success, quality resources are a really good tool for helping you to meet your goals. Um, I'll just give you one example in my own life. I have had to spend money on Spanish books for, because one of my big goals, one of my family's big goals is for my boys to grow up to be bilingual. Now, we don't live in a place where we can get Spanish books from the library. That's simply not an option where we live. Uh, so I could be like, oh well, I don't want to spend any money on Spanish books, so I'll just not have any. Uh, actually, Spanish books are a very important part of my strategy as a non-native speaker of raising Spanish-speaking kids. And so I'm going to, and I have invested the money in slowly building a bookshelf a, you know small collection of Spanish books and th th that's definitely at times been a struggle for me which is like the English book I can get it for free or the Spanish book I have to spend money <laughs> um, but that, that it goes back to remembering what are my goals my if my goal is to learn Spanish I need to be able to put my money where my mouth is so you may have goals in your homeschool that money can help you reach maybe your child has a dream of you know being a musician or learning a very specific skill that, yeah, okay, maybe you could kind of learn it from YouTube videos, but maybe also going to real lessons might be able to help you reach that goal and reach a serious level of skill faster. Maybe, not always. Uh, but I just encourage you, don't, don't always give homeschool the short end of the stick when it comes to where you put your budget and your finances. Figure out what works for your family. Don't go over your budget, but don't feel like, oh, homeschool isn't worth putting my money in. Because if we love it, if we say that it's valuable, we should treat it like it's valuable. All right, I'd love to hear in the comments below what you think are some of the mistakes that you have made in your own homeschool or just general homeschooler mistakes. I'd love to continue this conversation with you in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on the three points that I brought up. Remember to check out Leilani's video to hear what she's gonna say and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.